Thanks for your tech. If you're one of the few thousand people that watched my latest time-lapse film, London Storm, thank you so much. Or as we would say in Antwerp, Nindike Merci. If you're one of the few dozens of people that asked me how I made it, what camera gear I used and which software I used, etc., then this video is for you. About this video, it is sponsored by no one. Technically, it might be sponsored by you, but more about that later. Anyways, let's begin. Hello, my name is Matthew Van Putum, I'm a Tomlaster of Living on this channel of Tomlaster Tutorials. That was a pretty good one. First up, the camera gear. Which cameras did I use to shoot these time lapses? So they were shot on two cameras and two lenses. Two Lumix cameras. I'm filming currently on the Lumix S5 and it was also shot on the Lumix S1. Both these cameras have amazing built-in time-lapse features, which is the main reason that I use them. You get to render 4K video files in camera. You can save your RAW files and your JPEGs alongside that as well. They've got like delayed starts, exposure leveling for Holy Grail shots. Really, really good stuff. Highly recommend these cameras. Got some videos about them up here. Lens-wise, I've had the 24 to 105 f4 lens for ages which was the kit lens that I got with the S1, which is a really, really good all-round lens because it's got a nice wide angle at 24 and a slightly zoomed in angle at 105 or field of view at 105 millimeter. And then recently with my new S5, I also got the 16 to 35 F4 lens, which gives me more of a almost extreme wide angle look, which is really good when you've got a big storm system moving in, of course. Now this equipment isn't necessarily rated for extreme weather conditions. I do think they're splash proof or dust proof or whatever you want to call it. I'm not entirely sure about the rating, but I've put them through some shit by now and I am heavily impressed by how well it all held up. Uh, as you can see on screen, these are some pretty extreme storm conditions. I'm not entirely sure if it's ready for that, but everything still works really, really well. So I'm very happy with that, very impressed with it. And uh, hopefully it stays like that for a long time to come still. Now, obviously how to prep a time-lapse, you find your composition, you make sure you've got a sturdy setup. I use a Manfrotto super clamp and ball head to lock the camera. I also use a, a Peak Design camera strap to make sure it can't blow off in case any of these uh, mounts malfunction. Uh, the Peak Design straps are rated for I don't know how many kilos, but they keep it extra, extra secure. Put your camera on manual mode, manual focus, stabilization off, etc. That's all covered in my time-lapse guide. But then it gets to the intervals, and that's what people ask me a lot, like how do you figure out your intervals? I use this guideline, but for storms like this, I go with a two or a three second interval, depending on how long I'm going to shoot. And then I shoot for a minimum of 500 photos. At 25 frames per second, that will give me 20 seconds of video for one clip. Sometimes these sequences get cut short because the rain is just so intense and the wind is so intense or some there might be hail dropping down and I forget to put my lens hood on. If a hailstone or whatever you want to call it hits the front of your lens, that's not good. So that's when I call it, that's when I pull them in or when the, the rain is just like blowing sideways and it's getting into all the little crevasses of the camera. Um, but yeah, most of the time I shoot about 500 photos with a two to three second interval, of course, depending on the length of the storm. Then once I am done shooting, I offload the contents of the SDXC cards, which are Lexar brand, by the way, I've offloaded them to my internal SSD, my solid state drive on my MacBook, because that is the fastest way to work. And then that folder that I offloaded them in, I import that into a fresh Lightroom catalog using the add method, which keeps the photo in their place. Then something I absolutely love using is the Time Lapse Plus Studio Lightroom Classic plugin. That's a whole bunch of words. That automatically recognizes which photos are part of a time lapse sequence based on the metadata or the time of shooting. So that automatically creates collections. And then from those collections, I create folders. I create folders because on a finder or an explorer level, this is an actual separate folder, whereas a collection is a virtual folder within the Lightroom catalog. Once they're all in their own folders, I use my brand new Lightroom Classic preset and LUT collection pack to color grade them. So first of all, I go into the first sequence, I select the first photo and I use these numbered steps to apply a bit of contrast, saturation, vibrance, lens corrections, etc. Once that's all looking good, I choose one of the looks. Now these looks are what I've developed myself. Well, I've developed all of this myself. It's all part of this collection. And it's something that I've really loved using to color grade uh, all the London storm footage. Now these presets that I'm talking about, I launched them last week. They're my latest digital product. I'm super proud of them. They've gotten some amazing feedback so far and they come packed with value. So not only do you get the looks, 
you also get the color grading steps, extra looks, you get the local grading tools that I use in Lightroom, you get 10 video LUTs to apply these time-lapse presets to your video files, comes with 10 RAW files to play with some of the storm footage, comes with five exclusive in-depth video tutorials, including how to adjust the presets, how to make your own presets, how to use the video lots, how to make time-lapse footage out of RAW files, etc., etc. It's one hour total of exclusive video tutorial content that you can only get with this preset pack. Also, if you buy the preset pack, you get the opportunity to buy my ultimate time-lapse guide for half off. And because I'm launching it this week, you can get a $10 discount if you use the coupon code THANK YOU at checkout. Anyways, back to the video. Once the color grading of that first image of the sequence is done, I copy and paste or I synchronize all the settings to the rest of the sequence and then I save the metadata. The metadata, the metadata is pretty much a text-based form of what the edit is in the Lightroom grading panel. By the way, this grading panel gets completely explained in one of the videos in my preset pack. So if you've ever wondered what all those sliders do, I have a very long video that goes in depth about every single slider. I repeat this process for every single sequence that I shot. I save all the metadata and then I import those sequences into After Effects. The reason I use After Effects is because I can batch render stuff overnight. Uh, when I'm sleeping, the computer's chugging along, transforming all these raw files into high resolution video files. Speaking of resolution, I use full resolution, so 6000 by 400 pixels wide, and I use a Apple ProRes 422 HQ codec to export the master file, as I call them. Once I have all the master files for these time-lapse sequences, I load them into a video editing program, but first I have to go find some music for it. Now, I use mostly three websites. One is Licked for commercial charts music, I've worked with them a bunch, I absolutely love them, it's a great product. There's art list for like indie music and I use Epidemic Sound a lot as well for sound effects and for royalty free music. With this track, I found it on Epidemic Sound. I absolutely loved the, the vibe and the energy and the tone of it. I've actually linked it down below. If you want to sign up to Epidemic, that helps support the channel as well. And once I have the track, which can take a long while by the way, like I spent a couple hours looking for this music. Once I have the track, I load it in a timeline and I listen to it a few times and then I mark where there is like a, I call it a temperature change or a mood change or something where like the beat kicks in or there's a climax or it slows down again. I use markers and then I kind of puzzle all of the time-lapse footage in there and it kind of, I'm sliding stuff around and there's no real tutorial on this. This is gut feeling, this is a bit of experience. Even though I've got a degree in film editing, I don't really think that plays a huge part in it. It's mostly just, yeah, gut feeling and what I think makes sense in my head. And then I just keep tweaking it and I keep tuning it and I paste out any birds. I might go back to After Effects to stabilize the sequence or, yeah, to remove birds or planes and stuff like that. And then I finalize it. Then I make a YouTube thumbnail that hopefully gets a lot of clicks. And then I upload it to YouTube and hopefully gets a lot of views. <laughs> And that's pretty much it. I hope that was at least slightly insightful. You could do me a absolute massive favor by checking out my new LUT and preset pack. Work has been incredibly slow this year, as you may have noticed, like the pandemic has definitely hit so many creators, creatives, including myself. And yeah, I would just appreciate it if you could go click around on my website and see what I've, see what I've made, see what I've got on offer. Um, and if you like it, you can support this channel by purchasing it. Also, How's this hat? That's coming soon. More info about that on uh, on the next couple of videos, maybe. And that's pretty much all I've got for you today. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments down below. My name is Matthew, and may your skies be filled with fluffy clouds.